The U.S. Soccer Federation announced a historic deal today to ensure equal pay between the men's and women's players. U.S. Soccer becomes the first national team to equalize pay and bonuses in the sport, including for World Cup play. Jeff Bennett has the details. Judy, for years, the pay disparities between the men's and the more successful women's team have been the source of lawsuits and disputes. The women's team has won four World Cups and four Olympic gold medals. The U.S. men have not won the cup yet or a medal in the modern era, and they have not been to the Olympics since 2008. But now the U.S. soccer teams will pool all the World Cup money and other pay and divide it equally. For some perspective on this change, I'm joined by Brianna Scurry. She's a two-time Olympic gold medalist and a 1999 World Cup champion. She's also the author of the forthcoming book, My Greatest Save, The Brave Barrier-Breaking Journey of a World Champion Goalkeeper. It's so great to have you here with us. Thanks for your time. Thanks for coming in. Thanks so much for having me. It's fantastic. So U.S. soccer is now doing something that no other soccer federation does, pooling this World Cup money between the men's and the women's team and then splitting it equally. Mm -hmm. This has been a long time coming. <laughs> Uh, from where you sit, what was the tipping point? What, what was responsible for this change? Well, first of all, it has been a long time coming. It's been, you know, almost three decades uh, in this fight. And so I think what the tipping point was, was actually twofold. One was Cindy Parlocone becoming uh, the president of U.S. Soccer Federation. As a former teammate of mine, she played, I think, about 10 years on the national team and really, truly understood the problem and really wanted to make a difference and make it happen. And she was able to convince the board of the U.S. Soccer Federation and then also bring together uh, the men's players as well and have the two teams discuss it and everybody be on board. And I think the collaboration um, initiative that she put forward was really the thing that, that made it happen. You are easily one of the best goalkeepers in, in soccer history, period. Huge star of the sport. You've also sacrificed a lot for the sport. You suffered a, a brain injury in 2010 that cut short your career. Taking all of that into consideration, how do you feel in this moment? Are you excited or are you not so excited because it shouldn't have taken this long? Oh, that's a fantastic question. Um, when I found out about it this morning, I was thrilled because it's been such a long road. I mean, fighting for something for 25, 30 years, you really start to think that it's not ever going to happen. And sure enough, here it is. And it's true equal pay. It's not just some kind of uh, makeshift situation to make it seem that way. It truly is. You have agreement on both sides. You have exactly what's going to happen in this agreement. And you have uh, a great time for this to happen right now. And so I'm just really happy. I'm excited. I'm so proud of all the players like myself who laid the foundation in the previous um, CBAs, the collective bargaining agreements from the past, and, and the current players who really took it to to another level by um, doing lawsuits, and that really helped yeah. the, the ball move as well. And so I'm just really excited that we're finally there. In preparing to speak with you, I was struck by something I found in my research, that the Men's World Cup winner in 2018, France, mm -hmm. they took home $38 million. The U.S. women, just the next year when they won, took home $4 million. <sighs> yes, that is, therein lies the rub, yeah. right? That was the, the World Cup pay. Disparity was the main uh, issue that was w at hand. The U.S. Soccer Federation couldn't really do anything about what FIFA would or wouldn't do by how much they paid. And so I think Cindy Parlocone was real instrumental in going to the men's players, um, Walker Zimmerman in particular, one of the leaders of that team, and saying, hey, how can we make this better? Are, are you in? And, and they had many discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't just roll over and say, sure, <laughs> um, but uh, this th did the right thing and, and, and decided to have a more unified front and we were able to get it done. We have about a minute and a half left. Sure. I is this framework, can this be rolled out elsewhere? This is precedent setting in this country, but can other countries do this? I really think they can. I, I think in Europe in particular, uh, countries like Germany, France, maybe England, uh, the men's teams can get together with the women's teams. I, I know the, the sport has been over there a lot longer and, and the highlight uh, of the countries that I mentioned, but I really think this can potentially be done. I think we're going to obviously, we're obviously the first ones to, to see how it goes, but I, I really do think it's possible to roll it out elsewhere. The, the men's team, the U.S. men's team, as you, as you rightly pointed out, they had to give back yes. or basically turn over some of their earnings. Sure. What was it like getting to that point? Um, I think the, the, the turning point was the men were sitting in on some of the uh, negotiations that the women were having with U.S. soccer, really getting a feel for what it was like to be on that side of the table and uh, decided to, to have more empathy and understanding. And also the men make quite a bit more money from their club teams. So they get their club team 
uh, fees and, and payments and salaries that are a lot higher mm -hmm. than our national team salaries. So I think it, it made it a lot more easy for them to make that adjustment. And it was the U.S. women's team that put soccer on the global map for this yes, country. It was. Thank you for saying It's that. a real honor to speak with you, <laughs> Thank Brianna you. Scurry. Thank Thanks you. for coming in. Great Thanks to for see having you. me.